What's up, world? It's your girl, Ina Barnes, a.k.a. Busy E. And this is my co-host, who is also my son. My name is Jonah Barnes Moore, a.k.a. Busy J. We are excited to bring you another install installation of It's Just Business. If you've been watching, you know that we have been going down CNBC's top 50 list of disruptors yes. for 2019. Yes, yes. So today we are on disruptor number 47. 47. 47, and that disruptor is called Robin Hood. Robin Hood. Robin Hood. Jonah, why don't you describe Robin Hood for us today? Okay, so you sound very news anchorish right now. <laughs> I was trying to sound professional, profesh. I know. I know. Well, and enthusiastic. I know, it was good, but let's relax. Let's, let's chill. Let's put the shoulders back. Okay. Better. Busy E. You were rapping yesterday. Oh, well. And now you're. You know. I have a rap master. <laughs> I rap much faster. Oh, no. Let's, let's move along before <laughs> yeah. she gets oh, started. Not too relaxed. Not that relaxed. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right. Okay, but anyway, okay. Robin Hood's who we're talking about. So, Robin Hood. I'm sure most of you know, but if you don't know, Robin Hood is one of the few trading platforms where you can purchase stocks for free. Now, they came out in 2013 from Menlo Park, California, so Silicon Valley. West Side? Yeah. <laughs> West Side? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You already know. Um, they're currently valued at $5.6 billion. With That's a, a huge, huge, huge number. That's huge. Donald Trump, huge. All right. Um, now, on the article on CNBC, they say key technologies, blockchain technology, machine learning software, defined security. If you know them... They don't really dabble in blockchain like that. They don't really dabble in machine learning like that. But they do do something that separates them apart, which we're going to talk about a little bit later. But for the most part, they're about buying stocks. Now, if you follow me, you know, um, I've done a few things where I check, like if you um, add me or if I send you a link, you can get a free stock. Right. If I refer you, that's very popular nowadays. So that's how it kind of got its name. Right. People were doing the whole referral thing. You sign up with Robinhood, get a free stock. And their real value proposition is the fact that they have no transaction fees, right? So when you buy a stock, that is literally free. When you have other accounts, right, with the bigger names like the E-Trades, the TD Ameritrades, you know, the um, Goldman Sachs, Vanguards, um, Charles Schwab's, all those kind of companies, right? Mm -hmm. They charge you for every transaction like that you do, right? So, for example, I want to buy some Amazon. They're going to literally charge me for that transaction, right? Robinhood does not do that. There is zero fees, right? And they also have other features similar to, you know, the big banks, you know, the, the ones I just named, E-Trade, Charles Schwab, Vanguard, and all those, right? They have this, they have a service where you can actually do options trading, right? So if you go to their gold premium, which is a subscription um, model for them, you subscribe to their premium services, you have access to options trading, you have access to margins trading, and you have access to, um, I forget. It's one more of the service, but you get more access when you have a premium subscription with them. Okay. Um, now, why did they say blockchain on this article? Well, one of the things that Robinhood also offers that many other um, banks don't offer is the ability to purchase cryptocurrency. So, and that, that is that's huge. very that's very innovative. Yes, that's pushing the culture of cryptocurrency and blockchain forward, right? That's something that a lot of others don't do. But whispers, just if you're if you're watching this, TD Ameritrade is actually supposed to be having their own crypto um, currency selling type deal in the next couple of weeks, and this is May twenty third. So be on the lookout for that, TD Ameritrade. Heads up. But anyway, TD Robin Hood Ameritrade the, is in there swinging. Right. So Robin Hood was one of the first that's in there, right? Now, the only downside, just because I'm a crypto fanatic, I watch it, I've been in the game since 2016, um, is that they are doing more custody of your cryptocurrencies, number one. Mm -hmm. So when you buy a cryptocurrency from Robinhood, you can't actually move it yourself as if you were going to buy it from Coinbase, right? So they are really holding custody of your cryptocurrency, right? As opposed to if you get it from Coinbase, you have it, you control it, you send it where you want it, want it to go. Right. Number two, not all cryptocurrencies are available for purchase on Robinhood. Right. The only ones I've seen really is Bitcoin. That's the only one. 
Um, they right. show you the other ones. They show you the charts of the other ones, but you can't really purchase like XRP. Right. You know, That's what I was looking ones. for. I was trying to find XRP and I couldn't right. find it. So you so. They show you the chart, but you can't buy it. So with the cryptocurrency capability, it's limited, but they're making the right step in the right direction. They're getting people comfortable with it. Right. Mm -hmm. And so now that you have an idea there, you know, have free trade transactions. It's real simple to use mobile app. You can download on your phone worth about 5.6 billion. Been going at it for six years. My favorite B word. You know, so. So it's everybody's favorite B word. Well, I hope it's everybody's favorite B word. Um, but yeah, they're doing big things and they're really innovative in the way that they operate their business, which is what we will talk about next, right? So with this segment that we've been talking about over the past couple of days, mm -hmm. are Robin Hood a disruptors, right? Are they considered a disruptor? And how do we determine that? Well, we use our framework, which is derived from the counter innovation theory, right? One way that we identify disruptors is we ask ourselves, do they do one of the following three things? Do they challenge the status quo? Do they develop the innovative technology? Or do they address unrecognized high priority pain points or latent pain points that people, the general public did not realize, right? So we're going to go over that in okay. this company, right? I'm going to save the best for last. So we're going to start with the most obvious one. Did they develop disruptive technology? No. No, they did not. They didn't develop an application. They didn't develop a cryptocurrency, blockchain, none of that stuff. So no, they're not really on the that end, that cutting edge of disrupting something. Right. We're creating something to make new capabilities for people. No, they're not in that realm. Didn't do that. Uh -uh. Number two, did they solve unrecognized high priority pain points, right? Unrecognized? No, that they did solve a high priority pain point. They realized people did not want to pay fees for every single transaction. Right, it adds up, and you know the market fluctuates all to, all the time. So if you really manage your portfolio, just trying to save money is going to cost you money. Just trying to manage your money is costing you money. Nobody wants to pay extra money. I'm just trying to save mine. I'm just, you know, what I'm saying. Right. So they address that pain point, but it was not an unrecognized pain point. Right. Now, if people didn't realize that that was going on, or for whatever reason, right then it would be like, okay, that's disruptive because they didn't know that they needed this problem to be solved. Right. But in this case, nah. No. You know, pretty basic, pretty straightforward. Okay, so that's two of the three. They're no. Of the three. So they did not dis develop the disruptive technology. They did not solve an unrecognized high priority pain point. And number three, did they challenge the status quo? Now, from the outside looking in, you're probably like, no. No, I did initially I said no. No, but... This is because you got to dig deep and do okay. the research. Deep dive. Tell you what makes them disruptive. Okay? What makes them disruptive, Jonah? Right. So when you look at their business model, mm -hmm. right, and their value proposition, yeah, you see, okay, the premium memberships, right? But how could you possibly make any money if you are not charging people fees for trading stocks? That doesn't make That's any sense. That's my question. How do you do that? When you when you rack your mind around, you're like, whoa, how are they actually in business? How are they worth five point six billion? Doesn't make right. Sense. I'm gonna tell you what they do. They're real clever. They're the they're real wise guys. Like they're this is like, <laughs> like the scheme. Like you know, mafia guys pull schemes on the grand level when it comes to business. I, common knowledge. Um, they oh, do I, something very similar. My mom made me watch The Godfather, Goodfellas, Casino, uh, uh, Donnie Brasco. So I'm you know. I I I know a little thing or two. And I just watched an interview about Michael Francis. Anyway, don't worry about it. What they do is. Yeah, yeah. Okay. What they do is they sell the demand of people ordering stocks, right? So their platform, all those orders that they get. So say you, I want to buy some Amazon. Yeah. They don't actually have any Amazon. They don't. They don't have any traders on the floor. Like no, they sell it to other brokers mm -hmm. who actually. Need, who are in the day to day deals of trading stocks? Mm -hmm. They sell that to them, right? So they can, so they they basically sell in bulk, and sell so the bulk. buyer. And I'm asking, so the buyer gets a better price. So the buyer goes into the Costco rather than going into the Whole Foods, right? Well, no. So they're going to no, save no, money because they all the so data is collected they're, in they're one place. The, they're they're the middleman mm -hmm. between literally think of it like the manufacturer or no the, the they're the middleman between the distributor and the customer, right? So they're the middleman bet between the person who actually has them in bulk, 
Yeah. And the person that needs an individual stock, right? Because got it. The so they because all the transactions that you have on Robinhood go real time. Now it might be delayed a couple minutes, but yeah. because of electronic um, exchanges now, like things happen pretty smoothly. But they're simply selling the demand, right? And that's how they make money. So they're not getting money from the consumer side of point. They're not getting money from you and me. They're getting money from the people who are the brokers and the exchanges. Right. That's yes. that's they're like, OK, we'll give you we'll sell you these transactions for X amount of dollars. Cool. That's how they're bringing. That's it. how they make money. That's how they can offer it to us for right. free. Got and it. So do they challenge the status quo? Yes. That's where they do not it. Not a Got lot it. of the companies do that. Almost none of them do something to this level because mm -hmm. why? We want our fees. That's how we mm -hmm. make money. That's like the, with any other bank, all these unnecessary fees. Robin Hood's like, forget the fees, right? We'll just sell them in bulk. We'll sell them fast and quick. We'll right. sell the demand. That way, we'll get the customers down the line because it'll be cheaper, way cheaper down the line. Mm -hmm. But so that is Robin Hood. Um, yes, they are a disruptor. They are a disruptor. And that, and that makes sense as to why they made the list. Yes, yes. Now we're getting down the list. We're actually seeing people become yeah. disruptors and more disruptive, which I really appreciate. Good job, CNBC, for doing yeah. research and everything. And our expectation is that we, we can, as we continue to go further up the list, we'll see more threes that say yes, yes. and fewer no's, you know, yes. on the counter innovation theory. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we are saying Robin Hood is. They are a disruptor. A disruptor. Because yes, they did one of the three things. Yeah. So good job, Robin Hood. Good keep job. Up, keep doing what you're doing. Um, work on that cryptocurrency stuff though you're on something big <laughs> that you, gotta make, you gotta make it a little better all right right so we want to thank you guys for tuning in next week we will be talking about number 46 and what i see here is 23 and me i've heard of that but i'm yes. excited to do a little bit more research but thank you guys for tuning in um please comment share your thoughts on if this company is a disruptor we love you go we to jbmconsultants.org to get some merchandise um and if you comment and you're feeling some type of way please understand we don't take anything personal, and it's not personal. It's, it's just, just business. business. Thank you, guys. See you next care. time.